I'm Russ, hello. Um, so for the next area, we're going to just look at all the kit that we've got and the all these now. cameras and... Are you in the way? No, don't worry. Um, it's going to be a really practical session, so that's why we've got all the cameras out and all the cables and everything. So um, I want you to get hands-on with it all. Um, and the main purpose is so that we don't just rely on being in automatic. We want to be using the cameras manually. We want to be using the manual settings. Um, ask questions, but we are limited on time. So, Right, so this is what we're going to cover. Um, what we've got here is um, a load of sheets, and you've got them in the info packs. And they basically explain the kind of things that I use um, of how to set up a shoot. It's just a method that I use. Um, and I've kind of used this to sort of structure um, this talk. Um, so the first thing that we're going to cover is positioning, setting up your tripod, the cameras that we've got, white balance in your camera, exposing your camera, focusing your camera, all those manual things that you normally leave the camera to do itself in auto. Framing, how we'd frame the shot. And we're going to use my friend Clive here um, to frame as a demo. And when that comes on, you'll be able to see the framing, if that's on. Um, audio, so we'll look at wiring the mics up and getting people wired up correctly and getting good sound. Um, setting your audio levels, your sound levels, and then just some tips on shooting. So that's what we're going to cover. Um, so this is a fir the first point I wanted to make. Look after the kit. These are the tools that you're going to be creating your amazing productions with. So try and look after it. I've been sort of looking in the bags and seeing just stuff all over the place, and it's just making me oh. So I've tidied I've tidied your bag up <laughs> with your kit. Um, but really, look after the microphones, look after all these things, because they are very sensitive, delicate pieces of equipment, especially the microphones, especially this. Um, so try and look after the kit. Um, this is something that I use as well, which is, it's a checklist. When we came here, we bought all this kit, and I try and do this with every piece of, um, every, every talk that we do or every shoot that we go on, is put together a, a checklist of all the kit. Um, it helps in two ways. The first way is that when you get to the shoot, when you get to the location, you haven't missed something. If you've forgotten your tripod plate, you haven't got a tripod, you can't use it. So you are shooting handheld. So it's just a method of going through all the kit, checking it all into the car, getting there, setting it all up, and then when you're leaving, when we leave at the end of the day, I'm going to run through this. This is an old one. But I'm going to run through this, and it's just going to give me a bit of peace of mind, because so, I know that I've got everything, and I'm not going to be driving back later on thinking, have I packed everything? And then realising I've left a lens cap or a tripod, or and it's just peace of mind. So look after your kit, track it, keep on top of it. Um, right, this is all the kit that we're going to cover today. Um, so we've gone through um, all the kit that you've got. So I was going to go through everything now, but we've got the JVC um, HM 150. We've got three of those. So personally, I'd rather you shoot with these today when we when you do your filming. How many groups have we got? Three. Three. Three, so that's perfect. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, but the whole talk is going to be mainly focused on the JVC rather than the Allegri, because the Allegri is so easy to use, whereas the JVC is, there's lots of options and buttons and dials and things that I'd rather spend time on that. Um, <coughs> what else have we got? Large tripod, where's my tripod going? Can you see my tripod? There it is, behind me. So we've got the large tripod, the slick, not the silk. Um, We've got the Legrias, we've got the small Gorilla Pod, which we've got one out there. There's, they're in the bag, so we'll use those if we're going. I'll show. You, I'll show you how to set all these up as well. Um, we've got the labs and the, these lab mics, which this is a wireless one. I mean, that, the illustration there is of this one. We've only got this one. These ones are just direct, so you'd use this with the XLR cable, and you'd tether, be tethered directly to the camera. Um, and I think that's everything. Oh, headphones. Headphones are over there, um, we'll get those out later on. Um, okay, so that's all the kit that we're going to go over. Um, okay, so this is another sheet that I've got, and you've got these sheets are in the info pack as well. They're just useful resources, but the other sheet that I've got is this shop setup checklist. And really, this is if you're rushing, if you've got to set something up in 10 minutes like we had to today, it's just uh, an, a, a list of steps to go through when you're setting up your shot. It means you don't have to think. It means you don't have to worry and think, oh, have I done that, have I done that? It just takes you through each process. And then, as I say, I'm going to use this sort of stuff to structure the talk. 
Um, right, where are we? So what we're going to do is we're going to do positioning, um, which is the next one. Um, so when you're setting up your shot, um, the first thing you need to consider is your position, where you're going to shoot it from. Um, and it's, it, that kind of influences everything. Um, it influences the light, it influences the sound. When you're setting up your positioning, you need to consider all sorts of things like where your subject's going to be. So Matt was thinking, where am I going to be? We were considering what the light's going to be like, um, what's behind me. The shot that Matt's getting now is not probably the best shot. It's quite messy and there's lots of bits and stuff everywhere. But if you're filming something like one of these videos that you're going to do later on, try and think about what's in the background, try and think about what's in the frame. Um, and make sure it's relevant. Um, what's the quality of light? The lighting here isn't very good. I've already had this um, JVC telling me that there's a low light error. It can't white balance because the light's not good enough. Um, so consider your lighting. Um, consider your, the sound as well. We've got a busy road. So when you get to your location, just close your eyes and listen. Uh, maybe put some headphones on and turn the mic on and listen to what the sounds are. If there's something humming down there, that would pick up really loudly on the microphone. If there's some, a clock in the room, that would pick up. Things like that. If there's a air conditioning on or there's a busy corridor or a busy street, all those things you need to consider and you need to try and eliminate those. So when you're going to sort your position out, when you're sorting your location out, try and think of all those different steps. And then the other thing that's kind of essential is power. Um, when you're setting up your camera, like Matt is over there, he needed power because he's recording all day. Your batteries won't last. So think, are there any power sockets? And if there are any power sockets, how can you get power to the camera? We've had to trail extension cables along and tape them down so nobody breaks their neck. Um, <coughs> OK, so we'll look at tripods. Um, I'll get some tripods so you can all have a tripod. And we'll do a bit of a practical run through with the tripods. Are there any tripods over there, Lizzie? Right, if you can all grab a tripod, you can have that one. Yeah, there you go. One. Now, I'm sure you would know how to set a tripod up, um, but it's worth just going through it so that any little things that you're not sure of or any tricks that we've got. See, I can see a major error right there. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Bring it over. No, come over. Bring it over. It's good. It's a good example. I knew it had happened. <laughs> They are, yes, but they will yeah. all have, they'll have stickers on, don't worry about Abbas, it's more the, just, no, you hold it, it's yours, that's you for you. you. Red. It's not, it's just what, I'll, I'll, I'll use that, as you take this out, as you take this out, don't say anything, but see if you can figure out what the difference is between the two tripods. Okay, right, it's not my fault. Yours. You have got the arm, it's just not. Oh, that one, that oh, arm's off. Awesome. Now, what, do you, what do you think the problem is with that? Could it knock or hit or something? It's about looking after your kit. If you un 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 loosen it, loosen the nut, the big nut on the side. No, the, on the side, the big. No, on the side, oh, there you one. go. Let go, loosen that. Watch your glass. It's in case it's all going to fall apart now. Oh, I'll just put this over here. Thank you. I was very, very aware of the cups. Let, let go of the handle. See what's it doing? It's springing back up very slowly. Don't, don't take it off. <laughs> so basically, these are all, and they've got springs inside them. They're like sort of to keep it um, under t um, fluid and moving. Yeah. Um, by pushing it down, you're stretching the spring. And so if that's left in the cupboard for six months, when you take it out, that's been held in a position that it's just going to weaken it and ruin it. And, Kill the tripod over time. Um, so why have you taken this handle out? When yeah, so take the handle off. Was it yours or who yeah, is yeah, it yours? That's the yeah, you yeah. I mean, I, when I started at Cadon, that's what how they were packing it, and I was like, you don't want to do that to your tripod. I've learned something. Yeah, it's just it's a small thing, but it does make a difference. Don't worry about it now. Oh, okay, so I may as well just join in. <laughs> okay, so yours is pretty much set up um, in terms of the handle. You did an amazing job there. <laughs> You just turn up and it works, don't you? <laughs> okay, so have you got your handle on? I'll turn this off because I don't want to waste the battery. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is I'll open up the legs. 
because that way we've got a stable base to work from. Lock your legs as well. When you pack it away, lock your legs so that doesn't happen. <laughs> okay, so with the handle, and this will be good for you to note, Helen, um, it's not <laughs> difficult to put on. <laughs> No, but you can pass the information on. This is true. Um, so what you want to do is put the handle on where this little um, this little arm is at the back, because that's the back of the tripod. Your camera's going to be pointing at the front. And it just goes in there, and then the nut goes on at the front. Oh, sorry, where do you put? How do you? Okay. So what you need to do is so you take the nut off. Oh, right, not that. And then that threads through the hole. Oh, yeah. And this is the back of the tripod, so that's right. where you clamp. Yeah, so it's going in exactly. Yeah. There you go, I'll let you do it. Cheers. And that goes on the front. Okay, so. Yes! I knew that would happen. <laughs> okay, the other thing with a tripod is you want to. I'm going to carry on ahead while you do that, if you listen, because <laughs> I am aware of time. When you're opening your legs, Open out the bottom ones first, just because it saves you bending down later. If you <laughs> make your life easy, because <laughs> if you're if you set your tripod up at a height, but you only open up the top ones, and then you think, oh, I could do with a bit more height, you bend down. But you might as well start at the bottom and build up. So. <laughs> it's not. That's not a major thing. It's just a little tip that like makes it easier. So open them all up. Well, you don't have to, it's okay. So you get about six foot with these tripods. Um, once you've opened all the legs up and then raise the central column up. All good? Okay, and um, when you're using the tripods as well, make sure you lock the legs. I'll, I'll come and show you how to do that in a minute. There's something not quite right there. <laughs> it's a bit tight. No, it's a bit loose, sorry, actually, yeah. Um, okay, yes, so yeah. the legs, make sure you lock the legs quite yeah. tight. If you put a camera on there, it's putting weight, yes. and I've known tripod legs to slip, and if they slip, they fall, and if you've got a camera on the top of it, it can be a problem, um, especially when it hits the floor. <laughs> is this, is it okay? Yeah, that's fairly tight, yeah. That's good. How's that one, is that? <laughs> Well, that's all. I mean, that, if, you're in, if you were filming somebody sitting down, that would be... So, that's moving. There, I think. So, with that, you just turn that nut until it's fixed. You loosen that, loosen that, and there you've got... It looks like it's leaning backwards towards you. That's really, really, really loose. Well, that's probably my fault, so just going like... Okay, so... To operate the tripod, um, you've got various locks and nuts and bolts. You don't really need to use this one here. This is for the side tilt. That's really for photography. It's not for video. So don't worry about that one. The main two that you want to concentrate on is this big one at the side and this small one at the back here. Um, if you're going to pan the camera, you loosen the back one. That's Just left and right. Yeah, left and right. Just loosen it lightly. You don't have to take it off because it'll probably fall out and you'll lose it. Um, but make sure you do open it, because what I've noticed with these tripods is if you try and tilt it left and right and it's locked, the whole thing screws off here, and all of a sudden the camera's wobbling, and you're like, what's wrong with it? And it's because you haven't actually loosened it. It should tilt there between the top and the metal plate, not between the base and the metal plate. So just be careful of that. Um, and then the other thing is to tilt it forwards and backwards, and that's the big one on the side. If you open that up, you can tilt up and down. Yeah. And there's a, there's a degree of um, springiness to these tripod heads. They're not true fluid heads, um, but they do give you a nice smooth motion. Um, it does take a bit of practice, though, so don't expect to have amazing results straight away. But a good tip that Lizzie pointed out, that I always thought when you're operating the tripod, when you're moving it left and right, hold your breath. I was always thinking like a sniper. Snipers hold the breath just when they go for the shot. But Lizzie had a better idea, is count. So if you're panning from left, left to right, um, she counts. So it's one, two, three, four. 
and it's just a way of sort of giving you a rhythm um, it and slow, well. it slows you down and that's another thing that I'll mention later on and that's another one of Lizzie's points is that using a tripod slows you down and that's not a bad thing <laughs> okay so that's tripods oh there's um, another thing with the tripods you've got this central column which can be inverted um, so you can you undo the lock there you undo that lock there and it goes up and down to give you a bit of height that's as high as the tripod goes about six foot so if you're interviewing a seven foot basketball player you either want to get them to sit down and lower it to their height or point it up at them um, <laughs> This comes off and it can be hanging underneath as well, so you can actually take that off and have it inverted upside down. One more thing with a tripod is you've got these, you can spread the legs out quite wide. If you pull those up, it goes out to different widths. It just gives you a more stable base. That's a bit too wide. There's three settings. So if you pull that out, that's too wide. Whoop. Yeah, do it before you put the camera on, definitely. <laughs> it's easier to do when you've got the legs shorter as well. In fact, that's what I'm going to... No, I won't. No, play around. Go for it. No, it's meant... I want you to do it. Do it. Come on. This is a practical session. <laughs> so if you do them equally, you get a really nice, low, stable... Well, stable to an extent. If the legs are shorter, it is much more stable. You can make it low. Yeah, yeah you can make it low. It gives you a bit of more, more, more. It's not going to fall over. That's for damn sure. <laughs> you might want to get them equal. It's easy when the leg. It's easy when the legs are shorter. In fact, I'll do that on one of them. I'll leave this one up. No, you're not happy. Yeah, no, fine. It wasn't even anyway. Yeah, that's the other thing. There's um. When you get in your shot, there's a there's a, a little um, spirit level in the top of the head which you can use to level your shot out. I've found them to be not that accurate, to be honest. Um, can I borrow this one because it's got the shortest legs? Yeah. I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you what you're doing actually. Oh, well, this is a nice little tip as well. Um, when you're lowering the legs, turn it upside down. It makes it a lot easier. <laughs> What's up? Is that okay? There is a second one. It's just kind of hard to get the actual lock. It's easier, like I say, when it's shorter. That's what I'm going to do now. So if you want to get a very low shot of something on the floor, you can set it like that. That's a bit of a better example. With the, the legs short, that's how it should be. It's much more stable like that as well. So that's the kind of shot they would use if they were filming people walking down the street. Well, that's possibly. The, 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 the standard shot oh, they would yes. use on the yeah. Yeah. You're talking about something that isn't flattering. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, about yeah. handbags yeah. and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or shoes. Yeah. 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 There are lots of cliches in the middle storytelling. But that's because they work. OK. OK, the next thing I'm going to do is get the tripod on the... Um, the camera on the tripod. So, can you all get your camera, please? And we'll mount the camera. How many have we got? You, you've. We've only got the two. Okay, I'll do it with you. Okay, you can do it. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, hold it by the handle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you. Oh, it's like I could give you a baby. <laughs> so, we need to get this yeah, off. just pop that out. If I show you, so to get the plate off. Should we? Do you want this? Try, yeah. You okay? Okay. <laughs> you got your plate off? Yeah, you got your plate off. So there's a little wing nut in there. Screw that on. So there's a little wing nut in the bottom that just screws on. Yeah, if you pop that off, just clip that out. So you got your camera. And then on the bottom, there's a thread. This thread's universal. It's right. pretty much like any ca every camera's got the same one. Even the legroo's got the same one. So you can put a legroo on this. So okay. just screw that in. OK. Thank you. A lot of them. I'm trying to find a penny this morning. I want one. Oh. <laughs> oh, well done with the penny. Should we pay some attention? Very little. How are we doing? We've got the camera on? Yeah, we've got Is it locked on solid? Yeah, we think, I think so. With the tripod, just that's one of the key things. Make sure it's locked on. I mean, these aren't the best tripod. 
Uh, I mean, it is on solid. And if you do need to take it off and do some handheld shooting, you can just unclip it. Why would you want to do that, Russ? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you want to get some different handheld shots and get some... <laughs> <laughs> but we don't... Interesting. Yeah, we don't, we, we're not going to be doing much handheld stuff. We're all based on the tripods. Start with your tripod, guys. Start with your tripod. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to nick that camera off at some point. Where did I get to? Um, okay, so that's those tripods. Let's put those to one side and sit back down now. Um, <laughs> And if you can all grab a gorilla, um, get, grab one of the legrias and attach one of the legrias onto the gorilla pod. So the, there you go. So the gorilla pods, they're nowhere near as well. They're they're just not as stable. They're very flexible. Um, have I got one? Yeah. <coughs> you can also put the legria on the big pod. Yes, you can. I did say that to one of the groups. Was it you? Yeah. Oh, there's my Legria. Okay, so with the Legria and the Gorilla Pod, it's exactly the same sort of um, idea. It's just smaller and more fiddly. Um, so to unlock the Legria, what you do, rather than do it like that, mm -hmm. um, take the plate off. So there's a little locking okay. mechanism there. Oh. So if you unlock it, and then press the button and slide that out. So you've got that little plate there. Do you want me to press it on? It's okay. Oh. There you go. Okay, so if I take that off, just so that you can see. So what did you press to take it off? That button? I'll show you. Right. So that slips in there. Thank you. Great, great. So there's a lock there. So if you lock unlock it, press the button in. And it clips into place. It's already on. So you need to undo it. So that's for you. So if you take that off. You see how that little cream Makes it easier to slide. Yeah, this little lock. If you look, there's a little diagram on the side. It's very difficult to see. Right, so... Can you see it there? Just there, there's a little... That's a daisy. <laughs> Unlock and drop. Oh, <laughs> should we do that, shouldn't oh. we? No, that's... Okay, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll have to go all the way around. See, so you, you can oh, turn that down. Oh, like that. Yes. And to the whole thing, you don't need that one. And then you put the... To see the black bit, you pull that down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay so the, if you the, do that to there fully, the press that in oh, and yes. slide it out. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then you press it in and it clicks in. Okay? Excuse me. I'm going to have kit everywhere. Yeah, you do need a penny with this. Um, it's always worth having a penny in your camera kit or in your pocket. Um, we've got a penny in our camera bag. No, we've got two P actually. <laughs> Oh, thanks. I did want to try a pen coin, but it's a bit too fat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so once you've got your plate off, um, screw it in. Make sure you get the right way around. You want the thin end pointing forwards. You can use your, your nail as well, your thumbnail, but that can split your nail. <laughs> I'll, I'll manage. I've got strong nails, I've been doing it for years. Okay. So you want the thinner part as it tapers in towards the front of the, the leg rear. And then that just clicks in and then you lock it. Now these are great little tripods because you can pretty much attach them to anything. So you could wrap it around there. It, they do move a bit, they do slide, but they are really flexible in what you can do with them. That's a lovely watch you've got there. <laughs> Ooh. That's like the height of fashion. <laughs> Is that your idea? When I was thinking about this, I was thinking Genius. Um, one thing about the leg it's a bit, it, it's a bit top heavy, it's a bit of a weird sort of, so it can topple over, so try and spread the legs open yeah. and support the weight properly. Um, so that's a leg rear tripod. Oh yeah, so spread them out because it's just, it's all about getting a good stable shot. That's, oh, that's, that's good. It's not yeah, it's because it's not central. Yeah. So um, give it more support at the back. Okay, right, so that's tripods um, pretty much. Is there anything I've missed? Main thing, don't lose the head. 
you need the head of the tripod. If you lose the head, you haven't got a tripod. And they are really fiddly and really easy to lose. You tend, what tends to happen is you tend to leave them on the camera and then you'll give someone the tripod back and they'll come back saying, where's my plate? And you're like, I don't know. It's on the bottom of your camera. Um, okay, so just a few quick little tips. Make sure you lock everything, all the legs. Make sure you lock it. They, things slip, things fall over. And if you lock it, that's unlikely to happen. Um, I was going to say, don't leave a tripod unmanned. We've got one, two, three, four <laughs> tripods unmanned. But <laughs> they are tripping hazards. They are things that people will bumble into. If you've got cables like we've got, and, and you need to really be careful because they do fall over quite easily. And they've got a couple of thousand pounds worth of camera equipment on the top, which will break if it hits the ground hard. Um, as I mentioned before, the head of the, the, the slick silk, not the slick, <laughs> it's. Slick, yeah. Um, make sure when you're panning left and right that you loosen this nut here. If you don't, this one's already done it, I think. It unlocks at the bottom and the whole thing starts to wobble. It's really a bit of a design flaw. They should have melded that a little bit more. I've noticed grease comes out of this as well. I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but there's grease in this plate that's giving it the smooth motion. So you might want to wipe it every now and again with a tissue. Um, and uh, who's this to you? Um, take the arm off the tripod. <laughs> no, it's, okay. it's it, I mean, it's not going to it's not going to permanently damage it, but over time it will it will it will weaken the spring inside over time. So one day somebody will get it, and the whole head will just flop forwards. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've looked at the cameras a little bit, but now I'm going to focus on the cameras. So we're going to use, we've only got the two, the Legroom and the JVC. I think somebody's bought the <coughs> GoPro, but who's bought the GoPro? Where's the GoPro from? Oh, you bought the GoPro. All oh, right. Oh, no, no. Oh, it's probably oh that's mine. Yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm taking it with me for Christmas. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, so now there is a GoPro. We're not going to cover that at the moment. So we just stick to the two. Um, right. I'm going to focus on the JVC because of the two cameras, this is the more traditional camera. It's got all the controls that you expect from a camera. Matt's using a different camera. He had to loan a camera because I need this for the demonstration. So we couldn't film it with our camera. So we've had to loan a camera. And pretty much all the controls on it are not identical. They're very similar to the controls on this. You've got the focus wheel here. You've got the, let me just loosen it. I'll take it off. You've got the focus wheel here. You've got the zoom toggle there. You've got the audio unit, you've got the microphone, you've got the various auto switches, the sound switches, and um, the user buttons. Most cameras have that sort of setup. It's a traditional design that's been around for quite a while now, so everyone's familiar with this sort of design. Legria's, it's a bit of a more unique setup, so if you want to do any alterations to the way the camera works, you have to fiddle around with the menu, and it's just... It's just a bit fiddly. It's a bit unique to that one camera. Every little camera has got their own little menu system. So that's why we're going to use this. Um, but the Legrias are, are decent. They're small, portable. Um, they've not got very good sound. So if you are recording something and you want good sound, it's probably best to avoid the Legria or get the Legria close up to the person, close to the sound source. Um, and as I say, the controls are limited. You can't do a lot of manual adjustments to the picture. And that's what we want to do. We want to get out of using the auto and just start using the, the manual controls. It's also got a limited battery life. The Legris battery is not very good. Um, and you can't pair it from the mains, which you can with this. Um, but it's great for what it is. So this is the one that we're going to look at mainly. Um, we've done, oh, right, OK. We've got these leaflets. Um, they're on the CADARM website. They're also in your info pack. It's a reset guide. Um, I used to work in the film and TV department in um, Abbey Uni, and we had hundreds of cameras coming back from, well, maybe not hundreds, about 40 or 50 cameras that would go out every day and come back to the office where we would like, look after them and show the students how to use them. And they would fiddle. They were making their experimental media films, so they'd be playing with the shutter speed. They'd be changing all sorts of settings in it. And we'd get the camera back, and it had to go out in half an hour. So we put together reset guides, which just meant that we could sit down and go through a process of getting it all back to a default setting so that everyone else can use it easily. So if you took a camera out and somebody would be messing with it, and they'd changed the shutter speed, and they'd changed everything, and they didn't put it back to normal, and you tried to use it, you'd be like, oh, I, 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 I. So that's what this is. It puts you back into sort of an auto mode so that any, anybody can pick it up, press record, and it will work. So with your JVCs, if you could find that page, I'm going to just go through that now. So 
that we're all starting on the same same page. Where are the other JV? Oh, what I'll do, I'll bring your JVCs back. <coughs> Who's blue? Me. You're blue. <coughs> and you're using ours. <coughs> Beijing cough. Is that a not a baller or something? Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I find it easier to do it as I'm doing it. So, what I'll do, I'll come and sit down with you, <laughs> and I'll show you because I want to. I'm a bit methodical as I do it. So, if you pass it over here, have we lost somebody? Yeah, Okay. I have actually already done this with this camera. So if you turn the camera on, first off. You've all watched the videos. Have you watched the videos? No. Not for no. the JVC at all. That would have been the better one to have yeah, watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the more complex, yeah. the shorter video. <laughs> I've got about 20 minutes through the JVC one. It's only 25. Oh, right, okay. Well, that's better than not watching it at all. Okay, so you got it turned on. If you open up the viewfinder, and if you press the menu thumb button at the top, yeah, and then if you go down to others, it's about five or six down. So scroll down. Use the little um, joystick to yeah, the little joystick to knock it down. Do you want to? So basically, I've just gone to the, into the menu and go to others. Yeah, menu yeah. And then just go down. Press and scroll that. In the center, you've got a little joystick. Okay. So you go down, 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 down. Yep. Great stuff, thank you. No, I can't. That's all right. I'm going to move this chair because it's a little bit in the way. You're not, don't worry. You got down to it. Oh, right, yeah, way ahead of me. Okay, got to be quick, got to be quick. Okay, so when you're in others, go in. And then you go down to reset yeah. all. Have you found that? Yeah. 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 Press that. Mm -hmm. And then select reset so by pressing up. Yeah. And then you press it down. And the whole thing turns off. So that's just setting it back to default. Um, once it's done that, there's a few little things that we need to do just to, because the, the factory defaults aren't necessarily how we want to shoot. So we go into the menu again, and then what's the next one? Okay, so the first one, record set, video set, and, and then record format. So the first one, then the first one. Then you want to go down to frame and bit rate, and that's on 50. We want it to be on 25. That's what we tend to use in the UK. So all these, uh, they're just capturing more more frames per second, but 25 is the standard. So that's that one done. And I think, no, oh no, then we've got to press. Oh, right, so select that, okay. And then, uh, I think it's, it says 25. Oh, resolution. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. What's happened? So you're down to set. Oh, there you go, set, that, set. That's it, it'll, it'll turn off again. Yeah, and then press down and go to set. Okay. Then it turns great, off again. Great. Um, How are we doing? No, Record no, format, that's it. No, no top oh, one. Oh, on. Press that in, first. then okay. go down to yeah. 50, Frame where it says 50 height. There. Yeah, click that, and you go to 25. And then go down to set, and press OK. That's it. The reason we do that is that 25 frames per second is the standard in the UK, so it defaults to 50 for some reason. The audio, the rest of it's all switches, so don't worry too much about this. We'll just do this quickly. <coughs> so, with the audio, you want to make sure your mic's in input one. So it's channel two. On the audio mixer, you want to switch that down to input two. That's on 48. Yeah, that's great. You want these on auto. So put those on auto. That's it, that's already set, yeah. So that's that, and that's an auto, that's a manual. And I know we're going to do manual, but and then you've got those both on mic plus 48 volts, which is right. Okay, 
So that's how we would tend to send the camera out to somebody who doesn't really know how to use the camera. <laughs> no, we won't bother. With, oh, we won't bother with any of this. I'll just quickly go through the next bit because we need to press on. So you go into the menu and you delete all the media. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm guessing that we haven't really got anything on the cameras. Um, I'm going to talk about the ND filter later, but um, there's a switch here, ND filter. You want to try and make sure that that's turned off most of the time. It's, it darkens everything and it's useful, but most of the time you want it off. And it's quite easy to forget that it's ND turned on. Sample? Neutral density. I'm not wiser. Basically, think of it as sunglasses for your camera. I'll talk, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that it's later on. Cool that should have, yeah. <laughs> Imagine that you're filming outside in really bright light and it's the too whales. bright for the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> SD's, um, oh, is that SD? No. no, no, it's SD card. It's <laughs> What's SD <laughs> mean? I do know this. Science Direct, that's what I call SD card. Yeah, we did, Don't yeah. Worry. No, I can't remember. ND filter, <laughs> so there's another switch here, focus and zoom, you want it onto focus, and basically that affects how this operates. If it's on zoom, it won't focus, it will zoom in, a bit like that would zoom in. Um, so it tends to be best to have it onto focus. Um, 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 gain, you want on low, I'll explain that later as well. Um, don't worry about your time code, we won't worry about that for the moment, because we haven't got time. I'm 36 minutes through. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I've done all that. Um, okay, so we've got it familiar with the camera now. Um, another thing, make sure you lock your, close your lens. Yeah, that's clear. A lot of people tend to leave that open and leave that open, and it's just going to let dust in there, dust in there, all sorts of grit and filth, and just try and look after it all. <laughs> um, okay, so we pretty familiar with the cameras now. Um, what we want to do is we've reset everything. It's all in automatic. It's You could literally just pick it up and point it and record now and it'll do it all for you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to look at the manual settings. Um, before we do anything else though, if you look at my viewfinder, I'll open up the lens cap. You've got no real information on there. Well, if you find the display button behind, there's a little yeah. switch there. Oh, right. So Thank pop you. that open. Great. So you've got no information on that. Is yours the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you press the display button, I think it's two. Press it twice. Oh no, it's just a once. And you get the audio levels. You should be getting green meters from yes. my voice. Yeah. Okay, that's the most useful screen. It tells you. So, sorry, what sort of range does it pick up from? In what sense? The sound. Yes. Yeah. Well, it depends on the microphone that you're using. My phone is ringing. Christmas that can go on. Oh. Let me just turn my phone onto airplane <laughs> mode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure what the range is, but um, basically the advice is get as close as you can. These aren't the best mics, these are just the standard ones that come with it. I don't know whether you've all got shotgun mics, the, ro the, NT the larger yeah, shotgun mics. Yeah, They're, if you're going to be using a directional mic, try and opt for that. This is good just as a, just if you want to take a small kit bag and you don't really want to fiddle too much about it or have loads of XLR cables, this is a decent mic, but the other shotgun mic, the NT, NTG2, I think it is, that's NT2, that's the more, more sensitive one, and that's going to give you better results. Um, but these are quite good. So we've got the menu, we've got the display showing us all the information that we need. It tells you the frame size, it tells you the frame rate, um, it tells you how long you've been recording for. It tells you, you that your audio is picking up sound. If I tap on that mic, I can tell that it's that mic. Um, it tells us how long we've got left on the battery. Um, at the moment, it's in standby, and it tells us how long we can record for 228 minutes on this SD card. So try and get that screen up. Um, it also tells us there's an A at the top. That means we're in auto mode. You see, is yours saying that yeah. there's an A? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's auto mode. To switch that to manual, there's a, a little button there on the side that says full auto. Press it and then press it one more time and it switches to manual. Just here, there. If you press that, if you look at the screen, it's okay. So, if, if, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll press it and you look at the screen. Oh, I can't do it with both cameras in my hand. <laughs> okay, if I turn that round, press auto and then 
press it again and there it says manual okay so I'll do that one more time what I'll do I'll put that there so we can see it so manual and then auto so it switches between the two but you have to activate if I left that it be going auto, I, I press it and then I have to press it again to switch it. Right. Okay, so you press it once to bring it up okay. and then again to switch it. Yeah. So if you press it and it's like, well, that's not changing, oh. press it again. <laughs> so that's in manual. Lovely. Thank you. Sorry, I took the camera away from them. <laughs> Are you okay? No, neither. <laughs> I said um, full auto. So at the moment, see that there? It says A. Press it. And press it again to switch. So if I let it go, yeah. now that's in manual. And, if I, and it says M up there. If I press it and press it again, it switches. You have to bring it. If I then just keep toggling between the two, but you have to press it once to activate it and then make the switch. It's a bit fiddly at first, but you get it. So I press it. Now we're in manual. So what about again and, and white balance? Again? We'll cover those in a bit. <laughs> it's okay. There's a method to the madness. Um, I think we're. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay, so we're in manual. Are we all in manual? Yeah. I'm going to have to nick your camera off you, sorry. Is that where the SD card yeah. goes? Yes. It's in there. Ah, okay, yep. cool. It just pops open. Sorry. Try and close it then. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is white balancing. Um, do you all know what white balancing is? Does anyone know what white balancing is? Ish. Ish, okay. Light has a colour, it's got a colour temperature. So the light in here is... This, um, t uh, these sort of strip lights are, tend to be a quite green colour. Um, those sort of tungsten bulbs tend to be quite yellow. Daylight is blue. So if you've ever seen a photograph and everyone looks a little bit too blue, that's because the white balance was wrong. And basically it's the way the camera interprets light. So if you've got the camera and you're filming indoors and you've got the camera set to interpret white, so interpret the light, at, oh, all right, I need to sit down and think this through. <laughs> right, so I've gone, I've gone all flustered now. <laughs> Right. I know this. I've been doing this for ages. You, you set all this to your own preference for viewing, mm. don't you? Mm, you? You can do, yeah. but if you... Right, basically what you, want to, what you want the camera to do is represent colours accurately. Yeah. And the light affects how the camera represents mm. those colours. Mm. So you have to tell the camera what sort of light source you're dealing with. Yeah. If you don't, it will think it's outdoors and you're actually filming indoors. And the sensor will interpret those colours wrong, and that's why you get things that look blue sometimes. Or if you look at the next image that Lizzie um, took a photograph with her, these are quite extreme examples of bad white balancing. Um, but that's the same shot taken three times with different types of white balancing. And it's just the way that the camera interprets the light. So we've. Um, that w which one was pink? One of those was pink, wasn't it? You white balanced to. A pink coat. You tend to white balance with a white yes. sheet of paper. Um, you fill the frame with white, press the white balance, it, re it analyzes what the light is and how white the white is um, represented. And then from that point on, all your colors are based on that. You should set your white balance depending on the different location that you're in. So if you're filming outdoors, set your white balance to outdoor light. If you're filming indoors, set your white balance to indoor light. Right, <laughs> gets even more complex. <laughs> These cameras don't white balance properly. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that we didn't quite get at first because there's a tried and tested method of white balance which is you stand in front of your camera your camera operator zooms in on where you are because that's where the light is and do you want me to press white balance and press white balance and then it sets a balance to that character in that camera it doesn't work with that and we don't know why it tends when we do it like that it tends to give the images a bit of a greeny sort of tinge and it's a bit odd really <laughs> It doesn't look good. So we found that the best way to do it is to pull it back. So zoom out on your shot. In fact, I'll do this over here. I'll hook it up. Ah. Oh. What's that not going on? No signal. There we go. Okay, so so what you would normally do? Do you want to stand somewhere with a piece of white paper? What you would normally do is fill the frame with white, and then there's a button on the front 
that you would press. You want to make sure, see where the, if you look on the camera, there's a switch there that says white balance A, yes. B, and preset, yeah? Mm -hmm. You got that? Yes. Yeah. A and B, you set yourself. They're like, you can lock in a white balance on A, lock in a white balance on B, and preset is the preset that the camera would put it to. Generally, preset is on daylight, I mean, sorry, indoor light. Um, if you put it on preset, it comes up 32,000 K. That's the temperature of the light. Um, it's Day, um, daylight is 50 something K, um, 56 K. Okay, so we want to put it onto either A or B because I'm going to set it myself. So I'm going to put it on A. Can you see that yet? Zoom in, and it's probably not going to work because too, it's too light. Okay, it did. So you press it, and it comes up white ballot, auto white A, okay, and it locks it. And if I pull back, that should be representing the colours correctly. That looks okay to me. Yeah. It's not too bad. If I'm looking at Clive now, it does look a little bit green, I think. Um, so the alternative way, the way that we found gives you best results, is to pull it back <coughs> and just press it on the whole scene. Now it's saying auto white balance error low light because there's a lot of that's quite dark. So if I just angle it slightly over, that's set. And that looks a little bit better. There are a few other things that we figured out that you need to do. You can go to the menu. You can you can add a bit of blue and add a bit of red to sort of balance the colours out. It's a fiddly way of white balancing, but <laughs> it's good to know that that's why your colours can sometimes be misrepresented. Um, I'll unplug this. What have we got next? So that's white balancing. Is everyone okay with that? I know it's not clear. It's These cameras are a bit fiddly for white balancing, and so it's a lot to take in. But Yeah, have a go. Um, if you all get a piece of paper. Have we got any plain white paper? I know you know, need a piece of paper, yeah. So do you want to give it a quick go? So sit on A or B. Okay, if you also, if you look there, WB, if you zoom right out, we don't need the white paper. Don't point it at the sky, because that's lots of blue light. So put, say, let's say you're filming me. If I stand here, so point it at me, and then press that button on the front. Have you got it? Yeah. And it should say, yeah, error low light. Okay, so I'll stand over here. So there's more light. So that's locked the white balance for this room now. Okay, so it's very simple to do. Okay? You got it? It is quite dark in here for these cameras. I don't like the low light. Any luck? That's done it. You've done it. That's it. Yeah. Is that the, does it zoom out any further? If you zoom the camera out on that toggle there. So it's best to have as wide a shot as possible so you can take in as much light. That's it. So try it again now. I mean, it's fine, but if the wider you have, the more it can analyse what's in the shot. It's this one right there. Okay, thank you. So if you point it at me, it might be quite dark, but point it at me and hold it until it says OK. Yes, that's Yep, so that's your white balance set. Thank um, you. You can use auto, but it changes right. and it gets it wrong. So it's best to have it's it always best to try and use the manual controls if you can. Right. It's always best yes. because you know what you've done and you've set it and you're in control. If you leave it in auto, it can do things yeah. that are a bit unpredictable. <laughs> so you should keep setting that. Yeah, you every time. Yeah, to of course. Yeah, yeah. And you've got two options. You've, you've got, but you've got A and B. So if you filmed in this room and then you filmed some more in another room and then you came back to film, you can well you can have one. Back and you can have, yeah, lock one to A, lock one to B. So you've got two options. You can preset it to two, and you've also got the the um, the, the preset on the bottom option as well. So that's a general sort of indoor light, but you can see the difference if you switch between yeah. them as well. Yeah. So this is the. So that's me. I mean, you, the two. I think the two that you did. I don't know if you did the same one. But if you did, if you, if I point it at this yellow light here, um, this might. Oh no, I'll point it outside. I'm going to do one outside. Oh no, hold on. Okay, that's a good example. So what I've just done is I've just white balanced. Yeah. That's for in here, that's what you did. Yeah. Now I white balance the other one to yeah. outside. So that's much more, it's adding much more yellow because it thinks we're outside, yeah. so it's, it's misrepresenting, misinterpreting the light. 
I'll show these guys this. So this, I've just done quite an extreme one. What have you done? Oh, you've recorded it. So if you look at the colour on there and you look at the colours over there, that, look, that, that, that looks okay. That looks okay. So if, now if I switch it, I did the white balance to outside light on that one. Oh, yes. So it's a lot yellower. Yes, yeah. That tablecloth looks yellow. Yeah. That wall looks... I mean, it is a little bit yellow anyway, but... Okay, so they're two yes. extreme. That's the right setting, that's okay. the wrong one. Great. So always think about your white balance. This is taking way too long. Um, <laughs> I think I've covered white balance. Um, it's good to try and do your white balance first. It's easy to overlook. Um, so just when you get in there, when you get in your space, when you've got your lighting set up and you know what your light's like, set your white balance. Um, I think I've covered everything on white balance. Yep. I think the best tip with um, setting white balance is, if you're not sure, look at what's in the lens. I mean, look at what's in your viewfinder and then look up. And if yeah. the colours look right, if you look up and down and the colours match, then your white balance is good. If you look at the tablecloth and then you look down and it looks yellow, then you might want to set your white balance. Mm. And the reason why you need to set your white balance, because if you're shooting from different scenes and white is yellow in one shot and white is blue in another shot, when you come to edit those shots together, you're going to have to do a load of colour correction and it just saves you having to do that in the, at the end, end. And if you didn't do the colour correction, you've got shots that jar and all of a sudden the white piece of paper looks yellow. So try to set your white balance um, as soon as you can. Right, um, next, exposure. Okay. Um, I did have quite a lot of information on this and then I realised that it was far too complex. <laughs> so I've um, simplified it a bit. So I'm going to go back to my notes. So you can see here, we've got two examples of um, a shot, the same shot, exposed differently. One's overexposed and one's underexposed. And basically, that means that in that shot, too much light came into the camera. And in that shot, not enough light was coming into the camera. And so really, the exposure is balancing the amount of light, or balancing a few different elements with the camera um, to allow the right amount of light to get in. Um, so what you do, you expose, there's a sensor inside the camera, just as uh, film inside the old um, film cameras, you're exposing that film, that sensor, to the light. It's coming through the lens, through the shutter, and, in, and hitting the, the, the sensor. Um, and in auto, the camera figures it all out for you. So you can point it around and it changes. If it's really bright, it'll adjust. If you go into a dark room, it'll adjust, which is great. But it sometimes gets it wrong. In fact, it often gets it wrong. So if you can control that yourself, if you can expose the camera yourself, then you can control your shots and you can avoid any, un any ugly transitions of light changes and shifts. Um, so manual exposure, which is what we're going to cover now, it's a combination of these three things. You've got the iris, which is in the lens. It's the light coming through. It's the opening in the, in the lens. You've got the shutter, which is how long the iris opens for in each fraction of a second. And then you've got the gain, which is how sensitive the camera is to the light and how sensitive the sensor, the sensor is. And you can change all of these elements to get the right exposure. Um, if you open up the iris, lots of light comes in. If you close it off, not enough light, uh, a small amount of light comes in. If you change the shutter speed, a lot of light can come in. If you make it really slow, lots of light can come in. If you speed it up and make it very fast, not enough light can come in. So it's, it's a balance of the three. Um, and if you increase the gain, you make it more sensitive to the light so it looks brighter. Um, but really, we don't really want to go into the, the, the details of it. Basically, the one to change is the iris. And to change the iris, you look at the side of the camera there, and you've got iris AM, and that means iris auto or manual. Now, it says that we're in manual setting but we haven't actually gone into proper manual settings yet. You have to activate it. So to activate it, I'll do it here. Have you all found the Iris M A button? If you press that, oh, hold on. You get some numbers at the bottom. Have you got a number saying F 1.6? I've got 1.8. Yeah, that's fine. That means your Iris is active. Now there's a little dial here at the front. Oh yeah. Yeah? And then you can, if you're filming outside, and you've got it on 1.6, that's going to be really, really bright. That's going to be wide open, lots of light coming in. It's not really a good example in here because it's not that bright. So we need it at 1.8. And um, that's fully open. That's letting up in as much light as we can. But if we're filming outside and we wanted to stop the light coming in, you scroll up to about 
I don't know, six, seven, and it's closing, closing the, um, the aperture. Mm. So what, what would you say? It depends on the light. It depends on the light. Indoors, you want it wide open yeah. because there's not much light. Outdoors, you, you want it. it? I either get 1.8 or off. Am I going to Okay, right, sorry, no, it's this, it's oh, iris. Oh, right. sorry, so you press A&M and then you that, oh, so a different auto. auto if I, so A&M toggles it on and off, so right. it's off now and now it's on. And then and once it's on, adjust, yeah. that adjusts it. So if I go up to eight, that's closing it right down. Yeah. If I go, yeah, yeah, exactly, if I go high, that's as, as bright as it will go. Uh, these are, inside, these cameras so don't really work that well in low light, to be honest. They're not great. They're I've going for them. No, oh. no, they are. Like they're not, no, they are frustrating. <laughs> they were bought before I came. <laughs> now they're not bad. They're not bad. But they, there are things. All cameras have got the downsides. All cameras have got flaws. So it's just a couple of little things. And it's my job to highlight those flaws <laughs> and to make you aware of them, so you can work around them. Every camera's got a problem. I spent a lot of money on my stills camera that I used to video, but it's got some huge problems. And I'm I beat myself up thinking I should have got a different one. But you know, you gotta make a decision at some point, mm -hmm. haven't you? So that's the um the iris. That's the most effective way that you can change the exposure without having a big impact on the way that the image looks. You can change the shutter speed, but that will change the way that the image looks, I'll show you now. Um, and you can change the gain as we've already said, but that'll make it more sensitive and that adds a lot of noise and grain, which isn't very nice. Changing the iris just changes the um the depth of field, and you don't really notice that. So, what have we got? Have we got an image? Yeah, okay. So on this, I'm gonna change the shutter speed. To change the shutter speed, there's a little button at the back. It says shutter. If you press that, a number will appear at the bottom right-hand corner that says down here, one slash 50, that's 1 50th of a second. Yeah, you got that? Okay, so now there's a little dial there and if you start toggling that up or down, see it's getting brighter if I point it, I'll point it at you. Okay, so I've made, the, that's letting more light in, but because it's opening the shutter for longer, it's streaking and blurring, it's giving it sort of like a dreamy effect, which can be useful, but if you're filming an interview like that, it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite is if you lower it, if you increase the shutter speed, so it's really fast, you get a really sort of jittery look to it. So I'm just gonna bump the gain up so you can see this. So, hold on, that's on 250th of a second. If I, it's really, it, I don't know if you can tell, but it's really sharp and jittery. You know, like um, Saving Private Ryan, you know when they're storming the beaches in Saving Private Ryan, it's got that really sort of jittery, hyper real look. That's because it was filmed with a higher shutter speed. I think they did it with The Hobbit as well, they filmed that with a higher shutter speed. To make it, cri it's crisper, it doesn't have the motion blur, like you can see my hand there, and it doesn't seem to be blurring that much. If I put it to, Hold on. Normal. Normally it's one fi uh, a fiftieth of a second. There's a certain amount of blur. And if I slow it down even more. So the, that's, a sl that's a slower shutter speed. It's taking a picture over it. You know when you've, um, if you're taking a still photograph, if you have it on a slow shutter speed and you've got a car going by, you take a photograph and it blurs. It's because the, the shutter opens for longer. If you have it on a fast shutter speed, you freeze that shutter, that car in time. Um, and it's all to do with that. I'm not gonna go into the details of it too much. I think I already have too much in it anyway. But um, really, you want it to be a 50th of a second. Um, it's the most natural looking one to it. It's the one that represents like, how human eyes work most. If you wanna create like a weird sort of dreamy look though, you can play about with it and use it creatively and artistically. Okay, so that's... Um, Shutter speed, is that too much? No, that's Are you sure? <laughs> um, okay, finally, last one, last one, I will, this is very simple, don't do it. Basically, the, the trick is, change your um, iris, don't bother with the shutter speed, and don't bother with the next one, which is gain, um, because they do have quite a detrimental effect, impact on the image. So gain, I've lost my signal again. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna set the camera to a 50th, which is the standard setting and I'm going to set the iris to wide. Okay, now I'm going to increase the gain. I'm going to point at something quite dark. I'm going to increase the gain. You can't really see. Oh, if you came and look, I don't know if you could, if you all come up here and have a look. You see all these little spots dancing? 
It's like, oh, see you there? Yes, yeah. That's a, the impact of the gain. It's basically, it's digitally boosting the light, and, but it, d it deteriorates your image quality. You get lots of noise. If I lower that, it's still there, but it's far less pronounced. And if you bang it up again, it just makes it more sensitive. See all that? Yeah. Now it does, sometimes you have to use, if you're filming, it, uh, filming in a really dark situation and you can't see anything, mm -hmm. and you've tried opening up your iris, you've tried messing with the shutter, and you don't want it to be blurry, so you don't want to open, it up, um, open the shutter up too much. If you put the gain on, you will be able to see, but it will be a noisy picture. So use the gain sort of like only when you need to. But you've got those three methods that you can choose to engage to change the brightness of the image. Um, okay, so as with the white balance, the best thing that you can do is just look at the viewfinder and then look at what you're filming and look at the viewfinder. And if you've set it correctly, the two will be quite similar and that's a good guideline. And if it looks similar, then you're okay. Um, just try not to use the auto. <laughs> try to experiment with the, the shutter speed, with the, um, with the, 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 the iris and the gain. Um, we've talked about ND filters. If you are filming outside and it's really bright, you can switch that. I'll show you this actually. If I'm filming there, if I turn on the ND filter, it just knocks it down a little bit. It makes the camera able to cope with the, low, the, the bright light a little bit more. So it just makes it a little bit darker. Now that's not going to really help us in here because it's quite dark anyway. But if you're filming outside and it's a bright sunny day, the ND filter can make it really, a lot, can be really useful. Um, Oh, don't leave the ND filter on, that's the other tip. Okay, so, focus. Um, cameras focus for you quite easily, but they can also get easily confused. I don't know if you've ever seen any footage of somebody being interviewed and then the camera sort of shifts between the different focus plans and it's trying to focus on the, the, the plant in the corner and the person who's being interviewed and it gets confused. Um, I filmed something the other week and um, it wasn't from autofocus, it was from my error, but there's nothing worse than something that's out of focus and the only way to guarantee that you're going to get your shot in focus is by focusing it yourself. Um, so as I say the autofocus can get easily confused. It's trying to guess what is interesting to you. So if you've got a wide scene there's lots of things that it can guess. So I'm pointing the camera at um, this, this sort of general scene. Let me just get the shot right because it's very dark. Why is it so dark? Um, shutter is off. Let's knock that to a fiftieth. Okay. So, in this plan, in this shot here, we've got. It could focus on that. It could focus on the column there. It could focus on the chair there. It could focus on my hand. It's going to constantly. It's got all these things that it can shift on, and it tries to guess. Generally, it goes for what's in the centre, but sometimes if something moves, the attention of the autofocus will shift. So, if you were filming out of a window, and a, I'd, I'll tell you what, I've got a good example. Here we go. So that's an example of um, a shot that was focused on them and then some smoke just went drifting up and the autofocus shifted and focused on the smoke and ruined the shot. So that sort of thing you can't really control when the autofocus is engaged. So to focus it yourself, the best thing to do is to switch it into auto fo manual focus. I'll show you how to do that. So just here, there's an AF button, MF button. You got that? AFMF? If you press that, oh I'll show you. Oh, we got no dis there we go. If you press that, there's a, over on the right hand side at the bottom, it says AF, and that switches to MF there. Yeah? So that's a manual focus. So I'll leave that with you for a second while I show those guys. Um, just play with the focus wheel there. Is that switched? Down there. MF, yep. Yeah. Now, if you start messing with this focus wheel, yeah, Oops. so that's the focus wheel. I'll show you how the best way to get your focus is in a moment. Um, but that's how you operate it, and that's how you turn it on and off. Okay? <laughs> Have a play with the focus wheel. Go on. <laughs> focus on something. Have you got that working? Yeah. There you go, you're focusing on Clive. Yeah. Good old Clive. He's like the, the unofficial cat on mascot, isn't he, Clive? He's named after my dad. Oh, God, yeah, he's oh. like... Who's Clive? Clive Buckley. This is all being recorded, by the way. <laughs> 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 well, remember, edit, edit that bit. <laughs> edit. 
Um, okay, um, I may as well. Okay, this is. I may as well get you all to. You've all, you've all got the camera, so you may as well do this yourself. I was going to show you, but I may as well let you do it yourself. So you could use Clive. You could use anyone. When you're going to focus, the easiest way to, if you're doing an interview and you're going to focus on your subject, the best way to focus is to zoom right in. So if you zoom right in on my face now, uh, no, so if you're on the, to the top there, yeah. zoom right in as close as you can. Can you do, uh, pick the camera up? Come on, pick it up. Yeah, yeah, lift it up. Lift it up, use your hands. Come on. Okay, point at, point at me or Clive. I'd rather you point at Clive, not me. Um, <laughs> So I put that down to zoom, do I? Or still leave that on focus? Oh no, you want that on focus mm. and you want to use this here I keep to zoom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so are you, are you using this to zoom, yeah? This. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. fine, yeah. So, hold on, I've got Clive here. I love the way she's <laughs> <laughs> So if you, I'll, actually, I'll leave Clive here. If you're zooming on Clive, right on his eyeball. Oh. So can you get any closer? Right, right. in. Okay, now focus on his eye. Cause the eye is the area of interest. It's probably this is where it's better to have a tripod. <laughs> Should we put them on the tripod? Come on, let's put them on the tripod because it's going to be a lot easier. Bang that on a tripod. If you if you've got a steady enough hand, then um, do it. But if you're struggling, it makes sense. Um, we are sort of advocating the plate is already on, yeah. We are advocating that people use the tripod, so I'll leave you to put that on. I'll do that, don't worry, I'll be... I'll Steer in the camera. Okay, that's done. Let's do the next one. How are we doing for time, Matt? Do you know? Really? Yeah. Oops, sorry. Okay. How long has it been recording for? Do you want to pop that on? Error okay. in seven minutes. I'm nearly there. I'm not far off. I've got done focus. What have I got left to cover? Framing. Or, okay, we're not. We're gonna. So if you zoom in on the eye of Clive. I beg your pardon. So what you do with the, it goes in the front first, and then see this little thing in there. Okay. When you press that down, let go. It it triggers it. Yeah. So if you zoom in on Clive's eye, hold on. Turn the camera on first. Let's turn it on. I think. Unless you've lost battery, you've got no no nothing. Oh really, my battery gone already. Have you got, you've got spares on you? Yeah, but I did couldn't vouch for their charge. You have to get, oh, now it had come off, I think. There you go. Okay, so zoom in on Clive's eye. You're quite far out, aren't you? Oh, that's okay. I mean, ideally you'd want to be closer, but... It goes blurry. What do you mean it goes blurry? If you try and go in these things, it goes like that. Okay, so that's pretty yeah. good. I mean, with a, if you okay, I'll do zoom in on me, because I'm closer. So if you zoom in on, come on, camera operator. <laughs> so if you zoom right in on my eye, the reason why it's good to zoom in on the eye is you get a lot of detail. That's where the, did you, that's where you generally want to, the the audience to be looking anyway. When somebody's being interviewed, you want to focus on the face and on their eye. Um, it's how we communicate, really. Um, it, it does depend. You could focus on the hands, but. <laughs> well, no, I always like this is not a makeup, isn't it? Eyes, if you want someone to uh, watch you, and lips, if you want someone to listen. Oh, I've never heard that one. I've always gone with the eye, windows to the soul, and all that. Fair enough. Couple and do the rules of makeup because it's the same thing okay. to pay attention to, which you know. So, have you got that zoomed in my eye? Sort of, kind of. Give me a flip. It, flip it. To make it <laughs> if you okay, let's tilt it back a little bit. Because really, not go any closer. That's good. Okay, flip the viewfinder back around now, and then focus it on, on my eyeball. So if you get my eyelashes and everything sharp and in focus. 
Yeah. No, so you want to use the, the focus wheel here on the side. Yeah. Is that working? Yeah. So when you're filming an interview, if you focus in on your interview subject and then pull back, so you zoom in, focus, oh, yeah. then pull back, yeah. Yeah. and then that's your focus set. And as long as they don't move and you don't move, that focus will be fixed. Okay, so every time you shift the camera or you shift the subject, you have to go through your focus and check your focus. Okay, so you just, I mean, once you've done it a few times, it's easy to do. So you literally would just um, pull back. So I'm going to focus on Lizzie. Stay there. Just take, you can take pictures. Just, so I'm going to zoom in on Lizzie. I'm going to focus quickly. And I'm going to zoom out. That's that set. I'm pretty certain that that is in focus now and, it's that quick. and if I wanted to focus on Matt I would do the same thing zoom in on Matt adjust it <laughs> keep still Matt adjust it and then zoom out now he's in focus and it is that once you've done it a few times it is that easy so it's not that I mean it's easy to let the autofocus do it but it's not that hard to do it yourself after you've done it a few times so it's yeah it's just like anything it is practice but at least you know what you're doing rather than guessing what the camera's going to do for you next. Um, and that's what we're trying to sort of push. Um, okay. There's one more thing that we... Are you all focused? Have you got a focus? Yeah? Are you all focused? Okay. Press on the side. There's a user button one. Let's zoom out a bit first. So once you've got it focused, zoom out. Now that's... We know now that that is in focus. Now if you press the user button one, it brings up these blue lines. Let me change the display. See all these blue lines? That's your focus assist. Use button one brings up the focus assist. It tells you what is in focus. And at the moment, all of these planes are in focus. So things at the back, that's to do with the, the, the iris, but don't worry too much okay, about that. So Clive isn't in focus then? Clive is. He is. Okay, you can guess by the fact that all of these things are in focus that he's, he's pretty much. Yeah, just, yeah. I know that he's in focus because we've done it. <laughs> So there you go. I know. And then you zoom back in. That's in focus. Stop oh, moving in. So, oh, sorry. So if we point this at Matt, good old Matt again. I'm going to turn off. Now you, this um, focus assist isn't the most reliable, but it's a good guide if you're not sure what's in focus. So let's get Matt in focus. Keep still, Matt. No, no, it's fine. So now I know that he's in focus. Whether, whatever this says, I know he's in focus. But yeah, still that blue there. Oh, yeah. That's telling me that that area is in focus. Tired, Lizzie? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's just a quick way. So user one, press that. If you focus something and you're not 100% sure, or you think maybe they've moved, press it. And it will get, it's not 100% accurate, but it's a good guideline. When we did Lizzie's workshop, the, when Lizzie did a workshop a few weeks ago in Glindor, the one that you came to, I must have knocked the focus because the whole thing was out of focus. I set it. Went off and took photos, and then we looked at the footage, and it was out of focus. If I'd have pressed that, at some point, I would have known that it was out of focus, but I didn't. So, my mistake. Are you okay with that? Yeah, keep bringing up the wires at the back. Yeah, it's, uh, are you, do you know, is he in focus? I would say he is. Yeah, yeah and if you zoom in and out. Yeah, because he's yeah. so, so... The way focus assists work, it looks yeah. at contrast and pixels, so yeah. it's not 100% accurate. I think the reason it's bringing it in the wires yeah. is because you've got quite a wide, um, like the iris. It's to do with the depth of field. I think it's getting quite a lot of depth of field. It's just a good guideline. Okay. Anyway, let's move away from focus. Um, do you want to keep listening to us? Because he's run over time. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We've done focus assist. Framing, this is important. So, you've been framed. Um, so take your time to frame your shot. Think about what looks interesting. Think about what looks pleasing to the eye. And there's a few simple rules that you can use to sort of create nice, well-framed shots. Have we all got cameras, yeah? Um, if you don't frame your shot, you get shots like this. Now, what do you think about this shot? What's wrong with it? I look at the books. Shirt. Shirt, that's what's wrong with it. The shirt. The shirt, the shirt. yeah, that's a, that's a bugbear of yours, isn't it? It's too far away. That he looks small. He looks insignificant yeah. in the whole frame. There's. Well, I want the head and shoulders. Well, uh, yeah. Well, the main thing, for the first thing that I notice is headroom. What's what's that big gap at the top for? What yeah. what do we gain from that? Why isn't he yeah. framed properly in the shot? There's this empty sort of space behind him as well. That is this is his lead room. This is the active area. This is just like a dead zone of nothingness. How do you try and 
trying to read what's on his T-shirt. You're trying to read his T-shirt. That's all <laughs> down to what Lizzie said earlier. It's all to do with like Rather costume. Um, which is why I'm not wearing the T-shirt I was wearing earlier on because it said <laughs> "I'm forever blowing bubbles" on there, and I thought that doesn't look very good. Um, <laughs> and also, you. <laughs> you're looking at the book. You're looking at the files and the books as well. It's all messy. It's not very nice. Now, if you compare that to that, so you're focused on her. Look at where her head is. Um, there's not a huge amount of space that's wasted here. There's this area in the front, but that's active. That's her eye line. That's what she's talking to somebody in that direction. So that's what we call lead room. Um, so think about how you frame your shot. Um, when you're framing the shot. There's a few different rules that you can consider. They're called, well, they're called rules. I don't know really where they come from, and I don't know why they work, but they do work. The first one, the one that you've probably heard a lot, is the rule of thirds. On your phones, on your smartphones, you've got, you, get, you can get the grid, a grid up, which gives you a guideline of how to frame your shot. And that's what these are for. They, if you imagine dividing the screen into three sections horizontally and three sections vertically, aesthetic, that it's more aesthetically pleasing when you line the horizon up on one of those lines, when you line a figure up on one of those lines, and when you get areas of interest on the intersecting lines. So if you look at that one, her face is close to that area of interest there. If we look at that, that's, there is no, it's not applying to the rule of thirds at all. It's just sort of like floating around in dead space. So be aware of your composition. Don't waste any space. Don't have all this huge area of nothingness in your shot. Get close to your shot. You'll get better sound for it, but you'll also be able to frame your shot better. But don't cramp it either. Don't you don't want to cut the head off. You don't want to cut um, anything off. You also so don't. Can you get those lines on these? No, you things? can't. You can on the Legria, can't you? The Legria has got them. So this doesn't, as far as I can find. No. Um, so the rules that well, I've made a note of here: rule of thirds, um, horizontal lines, vertical lines. Try and have things on those lines of interest <coughs> areas. These four points where they intersect have interesting things there. So somebody's face should be on one of those intersecting points. Um, headroom, how much room is above them? Try to, you want some headroom but not too much headroom. Um, lead room, think about the direction of the action. She's looking that way so we want this lead room. Um, if you look at that one, that person's looking that way. There's something off there and they're facing in that direction. It's sort of where the action is. Um, if you had that shot and you had a huge space behind her and the, the frame came up to there, it would look crowded in on a face, so it just, it just wouldn't look nice. Um, and that's, that's it for those, I think. Um, 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 it, just, it just looks more professional, I think. Okay, so we've covered um, white balance, exposure, framing, so now we're going to set up audio quickly. Um, so how to record good audio, good quality mic, um, set your audio levels manually, we'll do that in a moment. Um, get the mic as close as you can to the sound source, so that's the best place to have it, right next to me. We've got a microphone here, and I don't think there's another one, but we've got a microphone here. That will pick up my sound, but it's not going to be as clear as this one, because the signal's just a lot stronger. Um, <coughs> what else? Um, reduce any unwanted background noises. We can hear that thing. We've got a little heater blowing down there. If you can eliminate them, then eliminate them. Um, film in a quieter room. I put a sign up on the door saying, quiet please, filming in progress. Um, turn the fridge off, turn the computer off, turn the air conditioning off. Um, what else, what else, what else? Monitor your sound through headphones. It's all very well to say, yeah, we've got a signal coming through here. We get in, um, we get in these green, green bars, so we know that we've got sound coming through, but you don't know whether it's picking up any interference. You don't know what it sounds like. If you've got a a microphone cable running next to an electrical cable, it can pick up interference. So listen to your sound, monitor your sound, use a good pair of headphones and listen. Um, right, we've got um, three microphones that we can use with this camera at the moment here with us today. We can use a wide range of microphones, but we've got three. Um, if this audio unit wasn't connected, if that came off, there are two microphones there. As soon as you pull that off, these two microphones are engaged. They work. They're rubbish, though. <laughs> if you don't know how this works and you're not getting any sound, you've always got that as a fallback option. So if you're not getting any sound, take that off. At least you can read. Some rugged sound is better than no sound. Um, but ideally, you want to use this and you want to use professional um, microphones with good cables. 
And um, so that screws into the hot shoe mount. And then you've got a little thing here that flaps open. That just pops in there, like so. And once you've done that, these are disengaged and this is your main audio interface now. Um, this is what sets this camera apart from all the other cameras that we've got, this audio interface, because you can plug in professional microphones. You can have two microphones, two separate sound sources. As we're recording with that one, we've got two sound, sound sources. Um, so, <coughs> we've covered the internal mic. Um, what else do we need to do? So we've got this, which is a directional mic. That's going to be getting sound from directly in front of it. It wouldn't pick you up. It would pick you up. Um, this isn't the best one. The longer one is better. Um, that's plugged into input one, and it's coming through on channel one there, the top top meter. Is your camera? Have you all got your cameras? If you let's, that's yours. If you have that, I'll get the other camera. So let's get the cameras again. How long have we gone over? A long time. I'm nearly there. It's nearly three o'clock. What time should I have finished? Oh, uh, you should have finished. I'm not telling you. Okay. Oh. You guys okay? Yes. Okay, so see we've got the meter coming through there. That means that it's coming through input one onto channel one. Um, shall I get the labs out? Have we got time to mess with labs? If I, if you, if, oh, should we show you? Okay, come and look at this. Oh, you can't see it. It doesn't show you. Yeah. Okay. We won't worry about that. We'll just set the levels on this one. I was going to show you that if you plug in another microphone into that socket there, we've got two mics in there. You get two, two green bars, so you get in two different levels for two different mics. Um, to set your levels. Oh, no, it's okay. Don't worry. Um, to set your levels, um, what you need to do is. Put it onto, if we put channel one onto manual, you've got a dial here. Um, if you switch that onto manual, have you switched yours? Mm -hmm. So just here, put that onto <coughs> manual. So I've put that onto manual there. And you've got this dial here that says channel one. So if I turn that right the way down to zero, nothing's happening. Just tap on your mic. If you turn it down to zero and then tap on your mic and you should get no, no reading, yeah? And then if you slowly increase that volume and tap on it, it's starting to get a signal. If you turn it up and keep going up and keep going up until you get a good sound level. Now you see it's going, is it going into the red bars yet? If you go right up, it's going into the red bars. Yeah, you don't want to be in the red bars. Red is a warning sign. <laughs> Um, you don't want to be too far from the red bars, but you don't want to be hitting the red bars consistently. It means your sound is sort of going to be distorted. So you want to have it set your level so that it's just to the right of the centre of the metre. So if I'm talking now, see it's just getting just above the centre of the line. Every now and again it will peak into the red, but not very often. That's perfect. So I'll just double check here yours is doing. So yeah, it was oh, you were loud before. You if we talk, well, that's because it, <laughs> it was pointing at me. Yeah. But if I talk, if you talk, say something. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Count, yeah. count to yeah. 20, count to One, 20. Two, three, that's quite four, good level, five, so you can see. Yes. You want it to be a little bit. Eight. Just before the red. Nine. Yeah, just yeah. before the red, to the yeah. right of the centre. Okay. Maybe a little bit louder. Yeah. 14, <laughs> no, not 15, you, we'll get this. Keep going. 17, 18, 19, 20. When you are setting your levels, though, you want normal conversational yeah. sort of volume. You don't want yeah. people saying, one, two, one, two. I did that with How's yours doing? So if you get it to just, just around, you want it to dance around that area. Mm. Just, just tickling the red is the best way of thinking about it. So get somebody to talk for about a minute. Just say, ask them to tell them about your breakfast, their breakfast or something like that. That's what we used to do in the film and TV department. Um, so are you all okay with setting sound levels? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? How are we about you guys over there? Yeah, you sure? I'm skipping over this quite quickly because I'm very aware that we've run over. Um, so we're not going to do the... We have got lav mics which we could use as well but we're not going to worry too much about that at the moment. But it is essentially the same thing. You plug the mic in, you clip it on and you connect it to the camera and set your level the same way. Um, and if you've got two mics, you've got two lines and you can set them at different volumes so that you've got... Um, Good sound. Um, we've done the setup. We've done that. Okay. Um, 
If you're not sure about the sound levels though, as I say, you can always rely upon this one if you disengage the whole unit. Or just switch it to auto. I mean, we don't want you to do that. We are all about trying to get you to use manual, but auto will take care of the sound levels for you. The problem with auto is that if it goes quiet all of a sudden, it tries to search out for sound, so it will just increase the sensitivity, and it will go, and it picks up everything. So it's not best. It's not good to use the auto if you can avoid it. Um, so what's the difference between line and mic? Sorry. Okay, right. This is getting uh, okay. Sorry, sorry. So no, it's okay. It's fine. Um, You've got three settings on the camera. You've got line, mic, and then mic plus 48 volts. Mic plus 48 volts. Some microphones need power. This microphone needs power, so we have to have it on mic plus 48 volts. It sends power from the camera into the microphone. It needs a small amount of power. If you have it on a microphone that doesn't need power, you put it on mic, like stage mics that you use. You know, like a normal interview mic. They don't need power. They work, with magne they work magnetically, so you'd have it on mic for that. Yeah. Line is when you're drawing a line level from something like... Uh, a sound mixer or a mixing desk. So if you oh went right. to a theatre and you were filming a, a, a performance, or if you were filming a lecture, a lecture um, in a big lecture room and they got a proper PA system, you could take a sound level from, um, a sound line from the mixing desk directly into the camera right. and get the sound from their microphones. But, but nine times out of ten we'd be on mic and... Mic, nine times out of ten you'll be having mic plus 48 volts yeah. because directional mics tend to need power. Um, that's a good question, though. I wasn't going to go into the line level, but... I was going to the default setting, that's all. No, it's... Yeah, you want it on mic plus 48 volts, ideally, because most cameras that we associate with um, filming uh, those sort of mics, they're condenser mics, they're called. Um, covered that. Basically, with the sound, avoid it going into the red. You don't... It doesn't matter every now and again if somebody coughs or if somebody makes a, gets quite loud, then it's OK for a moment. But if it's constantly hitting the red, your sound is going to be awful. It's going to be distorted and just unusable. And once it's recorded, you can't really do anything about that. You can't take it away. Um, so it's better to have it just right at the centre. Um, I'm not going to do the dual microphone. <laughs> OK. <laughs> A couple of final few tips on audio. Don't touch the mic. Like, you don't want to be sort of doing this. Sort of, um, yeah. <laughs> Matt's getting annoyed in the because I'm doing that, and all he can hear is <coughs> And um, if you start, if you're using these internal microphones, not that we advise that you do, but if you do, it will pick up on you holding the camera because they're inside. It'll pick up on the lens moving. Don't touch the mics. Don't try try not to handle the camera if you're using those. But certainly don't touch the directional mics. Um, and if you're filming outside, as that video that Lizzie showed, use a windshield. We have got windshields, but. I haven't got one to hand, so, but you know, the fluffy sort of things that you put on there, mm. use one of those if you're filming outside, even if it's just a breeze, it can ruin your sound. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so we've gone over positioning, setting up the tripod, um, white balance, exposure, ND filter, focusing, the focus assist, um, framing, audio, I've not done the dual sounds from one microphone, forget that, and we've done setting the sound levels. Um, I was going to look at the Legria, but I'm aware that we're running out of time. Um, the Legria is pretty much automatic. There's not really much you can do with the Legria, but you can adjust the, focus, the, um, the white balance, um, and you can adjust the... You can slightly adjust the exposure. It's called exposure compensation. It manually does... It automatically does the exposure, but you can influence that slightly. Um, I was going to go through that, but I'm not. It's all in the menu settings, but we might be able to get look at that another time. Um, no, so we're not doing that, and we're not doing that. The leg rear as well, if you are ever filming with the leg rear, it can zoom. It's very distorted. Um, if you turn the leg rear on, I'm just going to get one out quickly while I can. Um, there you go. So if, if you notice there's a lot of curvature. That's because of the lens. It's like almost like a fisheye lens look. Um, if you're filming an interview with that, it can look quite distorted. So there's a little button there that is a magnifying, and it, it zooms in, and it sort of it lessens the effect of the of the distortion of the fisheye. So if I that's the wider shot, and that's a more zoomed in shot. It just makes it look a little bit more natural. It's all it's doing is is magnifying what's already there. It's not zooming in, really. It's digital zoom. Um, to set the, um, 
the two things I would say in the um, white balance and um, exposure settings, if you go into the, oh, what happened there? If you, on the leg rear, if you, normally it's in auto, if you press auto, scroll up to P, select that, you've got um, two options, white balance and exposure compensation. Play with those if you get a chance, but we're not going to be able to cover it today because I've run way over. Um, where are we at? Don't trust auto. Um, auto will do things that you can't, that you don't want it to do. It'll adjust the focus. It'll adjust the exposure. It'll adjust the white balance just when you don't need it to. It'll adjust the sounds. It'll change what you're trying to do. If you're trying to film the sunset and you have it in auto, it just won't look as good. If you're trying to get the contrast between the dark shadows and the red sun, it'll try and sort of make that look normal and natural rather than have that nice contrast. If you're recording an interview and something goes quiet for a moment, all of a sudden the auto levels, the auto, auto audio levels will boost up and record all the background noise and sounds awful. So don't try, don't use the auto. Um, that's about it. Um, we were going to talk about the art of shooting and how to approach shooting. Um, and I've come up with a few quick little points. I didn't mean for it to do this. Hold on one second. Oh, forget it, I'll just go with that. Okay, so be aware of what you're shooting, observe what you're shooting, pay attention to what you're shooting, don't just press record and not really pay attention to it. Look around you and look and see what's in, what you can, what's in the, what you could put in the shot. Um, listen to the things that are around you. Um, and then think about, like Lizzie said, think about connecting shots, think about if you're filming a person walking into a room, maybe shoot them, go to grab the handle of the door and then walking through the room, or um, like Lizzie said, if they're cooking an egg, um, have them carrying the egg over to the table. Have all these connecting shots, that, rather than it jump from one scene to another, have connecting shots. Um, Visualise the shot list. If you've got a shot list when you're going out and shooting, um, if you're in the space, try and think, where can I put the camera? What will that look like? Um, and focus on each shot, one at a time sort of settle on one shot and let it, let it, let it roll. Um, don't roll for too long. Um, shoot with intention. Don't actually know what I meant by that. Shoot for a minimum of 10 seconds. So you wanna, when your editor is putting the footage together, he needs more than a few seconds. He needs at least 10 seconds. And then when he's editing, give him a little bit more than 10 seconds because when you're editing, you've got these things called handles. It's just the area either side of a shot that they can edit with, they can add a crossfade. If you start recording somebody who's talking and you start, you press record just as they start and you press stop just as they end, then there's nothing that he can do either end of that. If you give a few seconds either side, then they can crossfade that and they can maybe cut a little bit sooner or cut a little bit later. So maybe leave it to run a little bit longer than you might normally. Use a tripod and be still, don't fiddle with the camera, don't mess with it while it's recording, um, just leave it to do what it needs to do, um, and don't adjust the settings mid-shot, and keep it simple, and that's it. So, sorry, it's taken way too long to go through all this. <laughs> What's next? <laughs>